Epistles to several persons Epistle to Dr. Arbuthnet Alexander Popnik Sermoni Busvolgi Deteris T. Nec in permissum posuerus reum tuarum. Swiss de partet ilsbri ipsa virtus trihat ad verum decus. Quid dte ali loquenter, ipsi vidiant, esse de loquenter tamen. Cicero, de Republica viada 2 3, ampers and quo. You will not any longer attend to the vulgar mob's gossip nor put your trust in human rewards for your deeds. Virtue, through her own charms, should lead you to true glory. Let what others say about you be their concern. Whatever it is, they will say it anyway. Am person quo. Shut, shut the door, good John. Fatigued, I said, tie up the knocker, say I'm sick, I'm dead. The dog star rages. Nay tis past a doubt, all bedlam, or Parnassus, is let out, fire in each eye, and papers in each hand, they rave, recite, and madden round the land. What walls can guard me, or what shades can hide? They pierce my thickets, through my groat they glide. By land, by water, they renew the charge. They stop the chariot, and they board the barge. No place is sacred, not the church is free. Even Sunday shines no Sabbath day to me, then from the mint walks forth the man of rhyme, happy. To catch me just at dinner time. Is there a parson, much beamest in beer? A maudlin poetess, a rhyming peer, a clerk, for he doomed his father's soul to cross, who pants a stanza, when he should engross? Is there, who, locked from ink and paper, scrawls with desperate charcoal round his darkened walls? All fly to Twittenham, and in humble strain apply to me, to keep them mad or vain. Arthur, whose giddy son neglects the laws, imputes to me and my damned works the cause, poor Cornus sees his frantic wife elope and curses wit, and poetry, and pope. Friend to my life. Which did not you prolong, the world had wanted many an idle song. What dropper nostrum can this plague remove? Or which must end me, a fool's wrath or love? A dire dilemma. Either way I'm sped, if foes, they're right, if friends, they read me dead. Seized and tied down to judge, how wretched I. Who can't be silent, and who will not lie? To laugh were want of goodness and of grace, and to be grave, exceeds all pal single quotar of face. I sit with sad civility, I read with honest anguish, and an aching head, and drop at last, but in unwilling ears, this saving counsel, am person quo. Keep your peace nine years. Am person quo. Am person quo. Nine years. Am person quo. Cries he. Who high in Drury Lane lulled by soft zephyrs through the broken pane, rhymes ere he wakes, and prints before term ends, oblique by hunger, and request of friends, am person quo. The piece, you think, is incorrect? Why, take it, I'm all submission, what you'd have it, make it. Am person quo. Three things another's modest wishes bound, my friendship, and a prologue, and ten pound. Patholian sins to me. Am person quo. You know his grace, I want a patron. Ask him for your place. Am person quo. Patholian libeled me, am person quo. But here's a letter informs you, sir, twas when he knew no better. Dare you refuse him? Curl invites to dine, he'll write a journal, or he'll term divine. Am person quo. Bless me. A packet, am person quo. Tis a stranger sues. A virgin tragedy, an orphan muse. Am person quo. If I dislike it, am person quo. Furies, death and rage. Am person quo. If I approve, am person quo. Commend it to the stage. Am person quo. There, thank my stars, my whole commission ends. The play single quo taras and I are, luckily, no friends. Fur that the house reject him, am person quo. S death I'll pardon it, and shame the fools, your interest, sir, with lint it. Am person quo. Am person quo. Lint it, dull rogue. Will think your price too much. Am person quo. Am person quo. Not, sir, if you revise it, and retouch. Am person quo. All my demers but double his attacks. At last he whispers, am person quo. Do. 
and we go snacks. Amperson quo. Glad of a quarrel, straight I clap the door. Amperson quo. Sir, let me see your works and you know more. Amperson quo. Tis sung, when Midas ears began to spring, Midas, a sacred person and a king, his very minister who spied him first, some say his queen was worked to speak, or burst. And is not mine, my friend, a sorrow case, when every coxcomb perks them in my face? Amperson quo. Good friend, forbear. You deal in dangerous things. I'd never name queens, ministers, or kings. Keep close to ears, and those let asses prick. Tis nothing and quo. Nothing? If they bite and kick. Out with it, don't trot. Let the secret pass, that secret to each fool, that he's an ass, the truth once told. And wherefore should we lie? The queen of Midas slept, and so may I think this cruel. Take it for a rule, no creature smarts so little as a fool. Let peals of laughter, Cadrus. Round thee break, thou unconcerned canst hear the mighty crack, pit, box, and gallery in convulsions hurled, thou standest and shook amidst a bursting world. Who shames the scribbler? Break one cobweb through, he spins the slight, self-pleasing thread anew. Destroy his fib or sophistry, in vain, the creature's at his dirty work again. Threned in the center of his thin designs. Proud of a vast extent of flimsy lines. Whom have I heard? Has poet yet, or peer, lost the arched eyebrow, or Parnassian sneer? And has not Kali still his lord, and whore? His butchers Henley, his Freemasons more? Does not one table Bavius still admit? Still to one bishop Philip seem a wit? Still Sappho, Amperson quo. Hold. For God's sake, you'll offend, no names. Be calm. Learn prudence of a friend. I too could write, and I am twice as tall. But foes like these. Amperson quo. One flatterer's worse than all. Of all mad creatures, if the learned are right, it is the slaver kills, and not the bite. A fool quite angry is quite innocent. Alas! Tis ten times worse when they repent. One dedicates in high heroic prose, and ridicules beyond a hundred foes. One from all Grub Street will my fame defend, and, more abusive, calls himself my friend. This prints my letters, that expects a bribe, and others roar loud, Amperson quo. Subscribe, subscribe. Amperson quo. There, who to my person pay their court, I cough like Horace, and, the lean, am short, Amin's great son one shoulder had too high, such Ovin's nose, and in quo. Sir. You have an eye and quo. Go on, obliging creatures, make me see all that disgracked my betters, met in me, safe from my comfort, languishing in bed, Amperson quo. Just so immortal Morrow held his head, Amperson quo. And when I die, be sure you let me know great Homer died three thousand years ago. Why did I write? What sent to me unknown dip me in ink, my parents, or my own? As yet a child, nor yet a fool to fame, I lisped in numbers, for the numbers came. I left no calling for this idle trade, no duty broke, no father disobeyed. The muse but served to ease some friend, not wife, to help me through this long disease, my life, to second, our buffnet. Thy art and care, and teach the being you preserved, to bear. But why then publish? Granville the polite, and knowing Walsh, would tell me I could write. Well natured Garth inflamed with early praise, and can grieve loved, and swift entered my lays. The courtly Talbot, Somers, Sheffield Red, even Mitra Rochester would nod the head, and St. John's self, great Dryden's friends before, with open arms received one poet more. Happy my studies, when by these approved. Happier their author, when by these beloved. From these the world will judge of men and books, not from the Bernays, old Mixons, and Cooks. Soft were my numbers. Who could take offense, while pure description held the place of sense? Like gentle Fanny's was my flowery theme, a painted mistress, or a purling stream. Yet then did Gildan draw his venal quill. I wished the man a dinner, and sat still. Yet then did Dennis rave in furious fret. I never answered. I was not in debt. If warmth provoked, 
or madness made them print, I wagged no war with Bedlam or the Mint. Did some more sober critic come abroad? If wrong, I smiled. If right, I kissed the rod. Paints, reading, study, are there just pretense, and all they want is spirit, taste, and sense. Commas and points they set exactly right, and twere a sin to rob them of their might. Yet ne'er one sprig of laurel grabbed these ribalds, from slashing Bentley down to piddling Tybalt's. Each white who reads not, and but scans and spells, each word cotra that lives on syllables, even such small critics some regard may claim, preserved in Milton's or in Shakespeare's name. Pretty. In amber to observe the forms of hairs, or straws, or dirt, or grubs, or worms. The things, we know, are neither rich nor rare, but wonder how the devil they got there? Were others angry? I excused them too. Well might they rage. I gave them but their due. A man's true merit tis not hard to find, but each man's secret standard in his mind, that casting weight pride adds to emptiness, this, who can gratify? For who can guess? The bard whom pilfered pastoral's renown, who turns a Persian tale for half a crown, just writes to make his barrenness appear, and strains, from hard-bound brains, eight lines a year, he, who still wanting, though he lives on theft, steals much, spends little, yet has nothing left, and he, who now to sense, now nonsense leaning, means not, but blunders round about a meaning, and he, whose fustulence so sublimely bad, it is not poetry, but prose run mad, all these, my modest satire bade translate, and owned, that nine such poets made a tate. How did they fume, and stamp, and roar, and chafe? And swear, not Addison himself was safe. Peace to all such. But were there one whose fires true genius kindles, and fair fame inspires, blessed with each talent and each art to please, and born to write, converse, and live with ease, should such a man, too fond to rule alone, bear, like the Turk, no brother near the throne, view him with scornful, yet with jealous eyes, and hate for arts that caused himself to rise. Damn with faint praise, assent with civil leer, and without sneering, teach the rest to sneer. Willing to wound, and yet afraid to strike, just had a fault, and hesitate dislike. Alike reserved to blame, or to commend, a timorous foe, and a suspicious friend. Dreading even fools, by flatterers besieged, and so obliging, that he ne'er obliged. Like Cato, give his little senate laws, and sit attentive to his own applause. While wits and templars every sentence raise, and wonder with a foolish face of praise. Who but must laugh, if such a man there be? Who would not weep, if Atticus were he? What though my name stood rubric on the walls, or plaistered posts, with claps, in capitals? Or smoking forth, a hundred hawkers load, on wings of winds came flying all abroad? I sought no homage from the race that write. I kept, like Asian monarchs, from their sight, poems I heeded. Now Berheim's O Long, no more than thou, great George. A birthday song. I ne'er with wits or whittlings passed my days, to spread about the each of verse and praise. Nor like a puppy, daggled through the town, to fetch and carry sing song up and down. Nor at rehearsal sweat, and mouthed, and cried, with handkerchief and orange at my side. But sick of fops, and poetry, and prayed, to Buffo left the whole Castalian state. Proud as Apollo on his forked hill, sat full blown Buffo, puffed by every quill. Fed with soft dedication all day long, Horace and he went hand in hand in song. His library, where bus of poets dead and a true Pindar stood without a head, received of wits an undistinguished race, who first his judgment asked, and then a place. Much they extolled his pictures, much his seat, and flattered every day, and some days eat, till grown more frugal in his riper days, he paid some bards with port, and some with praise, to some a dry rehearsal was assigned, and others, harder still, he paid in kind. Dryden alone, what wonder? Came not nigh, Dryden alone escaped this judging eye, but still the great have kindness in reserve, he helped to bury whom he helped to starve. May some choice patron bless each grey goose quill. May every Bavius have his buffo still. So, when a statesman wants a day's defense, or envy holds a whole week's war with sense, 
or simple pride for flattery makes demands, may dunce by dunce be whistled off my hands. Blessed be the great. For those they take away, and those they left me, for they left me gay. Left me to see neglected genius bloom, neglected die. And tell it on his tomb. Of all thy blameless life the soul return by verse, and Queensbury weeping o'er thy urn. Oh let me live my own. And die so too. Am person quo. To live and die is all I have to do, am person quo. Maintain a poet's dignity and ease, and see what friends, and read what books I please. Above a patron, though I condescend sometimes to call a minister my friend, I was not born for courts or great affairs. I pay my debts, believe, and say my prayed single quo tires. Can sleep without a poem in my head, nor know, if Dennis be alive or dead. Why am I asked what next shall see the light? Heave single quo tennis. Was I born for nothing but to write? Has life no joys for me? Or, to be grave, have I no friend to serve, no soul to save? Am person quo. I found him close with swift and quo. Am person quo. Indeed? No doubt and quo. Opening parenthesis cries prating balbus. Am person quo. Something will come out and quo. Tis all in vain, deny it as I will. Am person quo. No, such a genius never can lie still, am person quo. And then for mine obligingly mistakes the first lampoons her will. Or bubo makes. Poor guiltless I. And can I choose but smile, when every coxcomb knows me by my style? Cursed be the verse, how well soe'er it flow, that tends to make one worthy man my foe, give virtue scandal, innocence of fear, or from the soft eyed virgin steal a tear. But he, who hurts a harmless neighbor's peace, insults fallen worth, or beauty in distress, who loves a lie, lame slander helps about, who writes a libel, or who copies out, that fop, whose pride affects a patron's name, yet absent, wounds an author's honest fame. Who can your merit selfishly approve, and show the sense of it without the love? Who is the vanity to call you friend, yet wants the honor, injured, to defend? Who tells whate'er you think, whate'er you say, and, if he lie not, must at least betray, who to the dean, and silver bail can swear, and sees at cannons what was never there? Who reads, but with a lust to misapply, makes satire a lampoon, and fiction, lie? A lash like mine no honest man shall dread, but all such babbling blockheads in his stead. Let spurs tremble, am person quo. What? That thing of silk, spurs, that mere white curd of ass's milk? Satire or sense, alas. Can spurs feel? Who breaks a butterfly upon a wheel? Am person quo. Yet let me flap this bug with gilded wings, this painted child of dirt that stinks and stings. Whose buzz the witty and the fair annoys, yet wit ne'er tastes, and beauty any single quotar enjoys, so well-bred spaniels civilly delight in mumbling of the game they dare not bite. Eternal smiles as emptiness betray, as shallow streams run dimpling all the way. Whether in florid impotence he speaks, and, as the prompter breathes, the puppet squeaks, or at the ear of Eve, familiar toad, half froth, half venom, spits himself abroad, in puns, or politics, or tales, or lies, or spite, or smut, or rhymes, or blasphemies. His wit all seesaw, between that and this, now high, now low, now master up, now miss, and he himself one vile antithesis. Amphibious thing. That acting either part, the trifling head, or the corrupted heart, flop at the toilet, flatterer at the board, now trips a lady, and now struts a lord. Eve's tempter thus the rabbins have expressed, a cherub's face, a reptile all the rest. Beauty that shocks you, parts that none will trust, wit that can creep, and pride that licks the dust. Not fortune's worshipper, nor fashion's fool, not lucker's madman, nor ambition's tool, not proud, nor servile, be one poet's praise, that, if he pleased, he pleased by manly ways. That flattery, even to kings, he held a shame and thought a lion verse or prose the same, that not in fancy's maze he wandered long, but stooped to truth, and moralized his song, that not for fame, but virtue's better end, he stood the furious foe, the timid friend, 
the damning critic, half reproving wit, the coxcomb hit, or fearing to be hit, laughed at the loss of friends he never had, the dull, the proud, the wicked, and the mad, the distant threats of vengeance on his head, the blow unfelt, the tear he never shed, the tale revived, the lie so oft o'erthrown, this imputed trash, and dullness not his own, the morals blackened when the writings scape, the libeled person, and the picture shape, abuse, on all he loved, or loved him, spread, a friend in exile, or a father, dead, the whisper, that to greatness still too near, perhaps, yet vibrates on his sovereign's ear, welcome for thee, fair virtue, all the past, for thee, fair virtue, welcome even the last, am person quo, but why insult the poor, affront the great, am person quo, a knave's a knave, to me, in every state, alike my scorn, if he succeed or fail, spurs at court, or jaffet in a jail, a hireling scribbler, or a hireling peer, knight of the post corrupt, or of the shire, if on a pillory, or near a throne, he gain his prince's ear, or lose his own, yet soft by nature, more dupe than wit, Sifo can tell you how this man was bit, this dreaded satirist Dennis will confess foe to his pride, but friend to his distress, so humble, he has knocked at Tibald's door, has drunk with cyber, nay, has rhymed for more. Full ten years slandered, did he once reply? Three thousand sons went down on Wellstead's lie. To please a mistress one aspersed his life. He lashed him not, but let her be his wife. Let Budgel charge low Grub Street on his quill, and write whate'er he pleased, except his will. Let the two curls of town and court, abuse his father, mother, body, soul, and muse. Yet why? That father held it for a rule, it was a sin to call our neighbor fool, that harmless mother thought no wife a whore, hear this. And spare his family, James Moore. Unspotted names. And memorable long, if there be force in virtue, or in song. Of gentle blood, part shed in honor's cause, while yet in Britain honor had applause, each parent sprung, am person quo. What fortune, pray? Am person quo. Their own, and better got, than bestias from the throne. Born to no pride, inheriting no strife, no marrying discards in a noble wife, stranger to civil and religious rage, the good man walked inictious through his age. No courts he saw, no suits would ever try, nor dared an oath, nor hazarded a lie, unlearned, he knew no schoolman's subtle art, no language, but the language of the heart. By nature honest, by experience wise, healthy by temperance and by exercise. His life, though long, to sickness passed unknown. His death was instant, and without a groan. Oh grant me, thus to live, and thus to die. Who sprung from kings shall no less joy than I owe friend. May each domestic bliss be thine. Be no unpleasing melancholy mine, me, let the tender office long engage to rock the cradle of reposing age, with lenient arts extend the mother's breath, make languor smile, and smooth the bed of death, explore the thought, explain the asking I, and keep a while one parent from the sky. On cares like these if length of days attend, may heaven, to bless those days, preserve my friend, preserve him social, cheerful, and serene and just as rich as when he served a queen. Whether that blessing be denied or given, thus far was right, the rest belongs to heaven.